Dash and Cash have faced the House of Black. Even beating them last week wasn't enough. So they're teaming with Daniel Garcia to entertain Norfolk, Virginia. All 3,000 of them. What a feeling. Garcia's feeling it. I can't do his dance because I'm a white man with no rhythm. What a feeling. I'm John Renton with my review of AEW Collision. AEW Battle of Belts 9. 9. Deep Space 9. I wanted to send Battle of Belts into Deep Space 9. Into the vast reaches of space where even the people in Ad Astra would not be able to find them again. Who remembers Ad Astra? Ad Astra had more logic in it as opposed to Battle of the Belts 9. That being said, the main event of AEW Collision was quite good. So, they were in the Chartway Arena in Norfolk, Virginia. Apparently, the capacity is somewhere around 9,000. They had maybe 3,000, 3,500 people. The audio was also terrible. Really, really terrible. Just figure... <laughs> Tony Khan has to have access to better equipment and better resources and better production people than this. They should not have audio that sounds so tinny and so ridiculous. <laughs> That being said, Giovanni, Kevin Kelly, and Nigel on commentary. Adam Copeland continues his open challenge to build his way back up, face some young challengers, and also uh, get Christian Cage's scrawny ass. That's something he said at the end of this match after facing Lee Moriarty. So, they had dueling brief promos. The match was fine for what it was. Uh, when Shane Taylor talked, I actually thought it was Stokely on stilts. Stiltly, as it were. Um, they did a package on Lee Moriarty. <coughs> I forgot all about Lee Moriarty. I know he's been competing on Ring of Honor, but there's only so many hours in the day. I actually did get to see Moriarty at an indie show a couple years ago. He is quite talented. There was nothing wrong with this match. Copeland did give Lee a lot. And Lee, you know, with some nice submissions and some good strikes, Copeland eventually won with the Grindhouse, the crossface. I don't know why they call it the Grindhouse. It was... An okay opener, I think it went a few minutes longer than it needed to, but nevertheless, given the rest of this show, <coughs> besides the main event, I remember when Collision really seemed like it was going to be the big goddamn show. I do also want to address something really quickly in regards to AEW. There's something that went on at New Japan's Battle of, or uh, Battle in the Valley, that is, not Battle of the Valley Belts, not Battle at Valley Lodge, where Jack Perry showed up and attacked Shota Umino. I may review Battle in the Valley tomorrow, I don't know, because I've been up since about 5 a.m., because I had to work, and then I watched three hours of AEW programming, and there was about maybe an hour's worth of stuff in those three hours, but... If Jack Perry is in, it, look, it's a work, obviously. Let's let's see him try to pull up that Crimea River thing, you know, with any of the veterans that you know work the New Japan USA tour. Let's let's just see him do that. They'll put him in the goddamn river. They will humble that little dweeb in a goddamn heartbeat. So, Copeland is coming for Christian Cage's scrawny ass. <clears throat> FTR last week beat uh, House of Black. I did not review last week's show, by the way, because I was watching a, an early access screen of The Beekeeper. It was shit. Just want to say that. Um, but FTR won. It was a good match. I just didn't see the point in reviewing the show. <clears throat> FTR and Garcia, they are ready to fight for their right to dance all night long. No, I can't dance. Uh, Garcia it can get a lot more over because also Garcia is a really good athlete. So, Archer and, well, let's see, Archer and the Righteous took on the Mughal Embassy, uh, Bishop, Khan, Toa Leona, and Brian Cage. Jake Roberts was in the corner of the Righteous Archers and Nana, the man who swears when he drives and he swears when he drives. It's for the Ring of Honor Six-Man Championships. I like Khan. I don't mind Leona. He's fine. Uh, Brian Cage is just not very good. Archer is a good big man, but he is on the downside of his career. The Righteous. I mean, Vincent does the snap thing. Dutch. The suspenders are certainly a choice. This match was a mess. This really got to be a mess. I mean, 
They tried, they had a plan, and that plan went off the rails, and then kept going off the rails, went into a ravine, and they kept trying to do the stuff. <laughs> Everybody was lost. Why even have a goddamn referee? Because they made the referee seem ineffective, at least in half of these matches. So, yeah, Khan pinned Vincent. There was effort. There's just a lot of a mess, or a lot of messy uh, stuff here. Prince Nana says, hey, how about we take out the gangbang gang on Wednesday? Oh, okay. So, Preston Vance and Strong. You know, the man that yells, Adam, you know... You know, uh, the member of the Undisputed Kingdom. That group that nobody can take seriously because their leader is literally hopping around in a cast. And I like Bennett. I like Taven as a team. Strong as a good athlete. Wardlow it needs to get the fuck out of there and do something else <coughs> in another company because they will never feature him right. So, yeah, uh, Preston says, when I beat... When I beat uh, Orange Cassidy tonight on Battle of the Belts, I'll face you for the International Championship. Dustin Rose took on Willie Mack in a match that was added literally on social media. And look, I don't mind Willie Mack. Dustin, credit to him. He still wants to keep going. I thought 2023 was going to be his last year. Here we are in uh, the second week of 2024, and he's still going. Good for him, whatever he wants to do. <coughs> Willie would have missed that goddamn splash even if Dustin hadn't moved out of the way. Dustin could have literally stood up and moved a couple feet over, and Willie still would have missed it. It was not a very good spot, and it was even more badly framed. And then we get a destroyer, and then we get a slam for two. Uh, we get a crossroads, and I believe the final reckoning, the inside out, used to be the final cut. One, two, three. It was all right. Then the Gang Bang Gang pre-tape, they accept the challenge for the Ring of Honor six-man championships. Too many championships. I don't care if Ring of Honor <coughs> is... Supposed to be a separate brand. It's not. It's it's not. It the tapings take place in front of very meager crowds. I was at the one a few months ago uh, for the collision just before the pay per view. There was maybe two thousand people at the start of the Ring of Honor tapings. There was less than a thousand by the time they got to six of twelve matches. And that's no disrespect to the wrestlers. It was too long. So, Renee is with Dustin, interrupted by Christian and the family. Boy, Shayna looks great. And Nick, I like how Nick is, you know, sinking his teeth into this role. And we're going to have a match on <coughs> Wednesday. And then another father shot. Your father is a legend. I don't hear anybody saying that about you, Dustin. Dustin's hung around in this game for a while, so good for him. Hangman took on J.D. Drake. People tend to knock J.D. Drake and look. I, I'm, he's not for everybody. I appreciate his hard work. And he certainly puts the effort in. I just hope he doesn't end up like Jerry Blackwell, who had weight and could move it around, but then that became a crutch and started to wear him down. So I just hope that he's healthy and that he has a long career, you know, long rest of his career and a long life. That's all I hope. They did maybe have this go a few minutes long, but you know what? <coughs> J.D. Drake, he did some good stuff here. They talk about Hangman winning the world title. Who did he lose the title to? Oh, Right. So JD uh, did, you know, a pop up into the ropes and a forearm. That was a good spot. They kept going. He did hit a Vader bomb during the break. And then eventually, um, we got a moonsault to the outside on Anthony Henry, who's in the corner. JD Drake, buckshot Larry, just one barrel this time. One, two, three. And there we are. <coughs> Deanna Ferrazzo took on Red Velvet. They tried. Red Velvet focused on the arm, but alas, we got. The tie-up and everything, and the crowd was cheering as Red Velvet was tied up. Oh, Norfolk never changed. One, or not one, two, three. She didn't sub pin her with a submission. As cool as that would have been, she got the victory, and Red Velvet said, yes! I don't think she said that. She probably said, fuck, that hurts. I'm done. So, they did take it seriously. I'll give them that much credit. Hook had arrived and won a match. So, he took on a guy named K.M. Matthews, and he beat him really quickly. And the House of Black, Malachi, Malachi, woo, Brody, and Buddy Matthews took on FTR and Daniel Garcia. They gave this quite a bit of time. I'm sorry, but Menard on commentary annoyed me. I know they're trying to do something where Daniel Garcia is supposed to be a little more serious, and that's fine. You have a cartoon mouse doing uh, commentary for him. So, <clears throat> it was what it was. <clears throat> it was well worked. It's not one of my favorite matches of the year. It's the best uh, thing of the entire night. They stole the show. It was petty theft. 
And the crowd was very into this. There were some loud shots. They built us some tags. They kept this going. They gave us, I think they gave us at least a good 20 or so minutes. And we got a Steiner Bulldog 1-2 kick out. And then a Powerplex misses because Garcia's not used to being on the top rope. Well, maybe don't do it then. And, and everyone just kept doing shit. Why even have a ref? Because the referee's just like, oh shit, I can't control this. Pile driver for two, that looked good, but he bounced. But then eventually a stomp on Dax, of course. Dax took the pin. Why wouldn't Dax take the pin? And then we got a bit of a melee afterwards. Hey, Menard got kicked. That was good. <laughs> and then the Shatter Machine on Brody. And then we cut to Jericho and Sammy and with Starks and Big Billy Willie in the goddamn parking lot. So, yeah, that's the beginning of the Battle of the Belts review now. Yeah, now. Immediately after Collision. I'm going to say right now that Chris Jericho and Sammy are probably two of the most hated guys in the company. Sammy because he's a fucking idiot and because of how he's been booked. And Jericho just because maybe people are just fed the fuck up with Jericho. They like singing his song and that's it. I don't know what is or isn't true in, this, in regards to this stuff that may or may not have involved Kylie Ray. Probably involve other women because I wouldn't be shocked because considering that the man's wife was actually at the January 6th insurrection attempt. I wouldn't be surprised if he viewed women as property like that. Allegedly. Covering my ass here. But regardless, there are plenty of reasons to hate Jericho. Like the fact that he is washed as fuck. Bodies that have been floating in a river for a year actually look better than he does. So yeah, Big Bill and Starks were their opponents. It's a street fight for the AEW Tag Titles, and they fight in the streets. It was about 45 degrees at this point in Norfolk. Granted, way, way warmer than it was in Lincoln, Nebraska for SmackDown, and way warmer than it currently is here. We are in the teens. Barely got into the 20s for this particular day. We're in a bit of a cold snap for Western Washington, but we will be out of it by Tuesday. Hooray, rain, impossible snow, and whatever. Let's move on. This is one of the worst matches that AEW has put on their program, and not just Collision, any of their programs. Pay-per-views doesn't matter. One of the worst matches they put on street fights usually mean you can fight, but you got to end up back in the ring for a pinfall. Nope, this might as well just been a false count anywhere match, because what is logic? Sammy runs them over with a golf cart that apparently was just sitting in an alleyway and nobody thought to steal it or say, this shouldn't be here. <laughs> Red Titus's car got destroyed. For what that's worth, and nothing has Red Titus, but what the hell. They destroyed a bunch of production equipment. Billions of dollars of equipment. I think Tony's overspending, Shivani, if that's what you're going to say. So we get a plunger. They get back in the building. We get a... Laundry basket. And then we get an extinguisher. Ricky Starks is better than this. Get him to WWE or please put him somewhere where he can be featured better. And, you know, mustard in the eyes. They are not taking this seriously. It's stupid comedy. They are booing the faces because they really weren't all that interested in Jericho. They had to turn down the audio during a pre-tape earlier. And then they, and then Jericho and uh, Bill get on a box. Actually, it's not a box. It's a box-like structure. And then Takesha somehow hits Jericho. <laughs> not only coming out of nowhere, the cameraman didn't even catch him. And there you are. That's, that's the end of that because we get a, a goofy spot where Jericho's foot was actually on Bill and could have covered him for a count of 20, but the referees are made to look like goddamn idiots. Meanwhile, Sammy and Starks, sounds like a cop show, are on the stage, and Sammy decides to do the whole thing where he's going to channel Jeff Hardy. God, you probably shouldn't, Sammy. I don't really think anybody should model their life or their career or anything they do after Jeff Hardy, given all the shit that he's done, all the chances he's gotten. They are banished to the AEW Rampage realm. You should be banished to a goddamn realm where you were working in a rec center because they're getting big paychecks for contributing absolutely nothing. And the Matt Hardy and Revy Sky stuff... Or Rebby Hardy, whatever. I feel bad for the kids. I don't feel bad for either of those two douche waffles. Nevertheless, Sammy <laughs> was supposed to have almost hit Starks before Hobbs pulled him out of the way. Here's the problem. Hobbs didn't pull him out of the way. He couldn't have in time. Hobbs apparently was having a nap. And Starks just had to roll out of the way. So Sammy just crashes through the stage. Starks covers him. And it was a garbage match. And it was terrible. It was absolutely terrible. It was one of the worst things that AEW has put on their program. And... 
a while in a long goddamn time. It's at least the worst thing they put on television since that Yakuza street fight thing. And that was only two months ago. My god. Khan has gone full goddamn WCW. Late era WCW. That is not a good thing. You can channel the Attitude Era without being shit. <laughs> so, yeah, Sammy... If Sammy and Jericho were written off TV for a while, I would not complain one bit. That was a pin, by the way, on uh, Bill... So, Serena is still uh, trying to fight out of the straitjacket and continuing to train, I guess. Julia Hart and Anna Jay had a match where they at least took it seriously for the TBS championship. Um, two former friends, Anna fought back, fought through a shoulder injury, Julia kept targeting it, and even fighting out of the Queef Slayer, I think that's the name of the role, or the move that is, and eventually Heartless. Trapping in Anna's like, I'm tied up like a pretzel, I will do this. There you go. So I think, um, you know, Battle of the Belts ended, actually, believe it or not. Then they decided to show dark uh, dark match stuff. One, they actually decided to show something that happened earlier today with Team TNA fighting. And then Orange Cassidy beat Preston Vance. And they think that Roderick Strong can restore credibility to a championship that was bullshit to begin with. I'm going to say right now, if they make or if Tony Khan makes Orange Cassidy the world champion... And I fear he will. He will either beat Samoa Joe or Samoa Joe will beat or will be beaten by Swerve and then Swerve will lose to Orange Cassidy. One way or another, Tony Khan is going to get that title on Orange Cassidy. If they do that, I might actually just have to say that's it. I'm going to find something else to do. So, great main event for Collision. And I hate to say it, but Battle of the Belts 9 was lousy. They really need to stop doing these or at least put more effort into them. More effort than they did here. And I mean the company. I don't mean the talents. Well, not Julia Hart and Anna Jay. They tried. Everybody else. Boy, Ricky, please, please. Oh, Ricky, you're so fine. You're so fine. Please go to a better company where you can be used better. Hey, Ricky. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rutland. I'll see you soon.